Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications on future uploads. Hello everyone, Simon Bard here, or you can call me Sully. With the sequel, Trolls World Tour having been out already, and now I haven't seen that film yet, I want to continue reviewing more animated films of 2016 by going over the only DreamWorks animation film of that year. And that film was such a big hit that not only got a sequel, but also a Christmas special and a TV series. And with the movie full of fun animation and songs, yet okay story and characters, the film is simply called Trolls. The movie is based on the Good Luck Trolls dolls created by Thomas Dam. And not only does it make a brief appearance in the film as a wooden doll, but I also have one of them with a skeleton costume included. The movie centers on trolls, who live in a troll tree and are not only happy all the time, but also love to hug, sing, and dance. Yet creatures called the Bergens can't sing, don't hug, and don't dance, and are very unhappy. But they figure that by eating a troll, they become happy. So they take the troll tree to Bergen Town and held an annual feast known as Trollstice, where every Bergen gets to eat a troll. One day, a young prince Bergen named Gristel is chosen by the Bergen chef, just named Chef, to eat the youngest and most happiest troll named Princess Poppy. But the troll is fake as the real trolls are running away from Bergen Town, with their king Peppy saving everyone including his daughter Poppy. 25 years later, the trolls find a new place to live as Poppy is going to be named Queen and is holding a big party in celebration of it. But one troll, named Branch, isn't coming to the party, as he fears that the Bergens would return, and a big and loud party would lead them here. Sure enough, Poppy's party is so big and loud that it brought Shift to them, and she took some of the trolls with her. Poppy decides to go out and rescue the stolen trolls, and even tried to convince Branch, who is hiding in an underground bunker with prepared supplies, to come with. Though she tried, Poppy lets the other trolls use Branch's bunker, and heads out, only to fail when facing dangerous creatures and obstacles. Eventually, Branch helps Poppy rescue the other trolls, as they head to Bergen Town, where they not only find the trolls, but come across a Bergen maid named Bridget, who is in love with Gristel, who is now the king. And so, Poppy and the trolls make a deal with Bridget to have her date King Gristel, in exchange to rescue one more troll named Creek, who Poppy hopes is still alive after witnessing Gristel trying to eat him. Like I said, this movie is full of fun animation and songs, yet okay story and characters, so it's a definite mixed bag, in my opinion. But at the same time, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. One of the biggest reasons is for how generic the story and characters are. I mean, I do like how the characters look and how they use their hair, but I feel like I don't quite know or relate to them well. Poppy is always seen as the happy troll, and wants to hug, sing, and dance like every other troll. With the exceptions being that she's a princess and is into scrapbooking. All of the other trolls hardly leave any impact. They aren't given much or any development, not even an introduction, and at the same time hard to tell who's who unless Poppy says their name. And despite a few characteristics, like Smidge often says oh my god and has a deep croaky voice, Guy Diamond is made of diamond and has a techno distortion in his voice, Cooper's is the most distinct as he has animal-like proportions, and Fuzzbert is mostly fuzz with feet, there isn't a whole lot to them and they don't really do much within the film. The only troll that has a full development is Branch. He's a curmudgeon, he's very paranoid in thinking the Bergens are coming, he doesn't like singing, dancing, or hugging, he has a prepared bunker when Bergens do arrive, and he has a backstory which is pretty rushed and even odd. In fact, let's go over that for a bit. Branch's backstory explains why he's all grey and doesn't sing. That is, he can sing since a kid, but refuses after a Bergen, or rather Chef, took his grandmother as Chef was about to take Branch, since his singing led the Bergen to him. And because he lost his grandmother, he becomes sad and depressed, leading him to lose his colors. But what makes this odd to me is that it's just his grandmother that died. Yeah, it's nice that the film didn't use the dead parent trope like almost every other movie does, but I feel that a dead mother would have made the moment a little more impactful despite the cliché. I mean, what, Branch only has a grandmother? He doesn't have any other family member? The Bergens also hardly leave any impact, except for maybe Bridget as she's in love with Gristel and is very nervous about meeting and dating him. 
But this does bring up a plot point in a movie which states that a Bergen can only be happy by eating a troll. Yet Gristle, even as a child, is seen as being excited when Trollstice is mentioned and feeling happy with Bridget as she's under the guise of Lady Glitter Sparkles, with a dress made by the trolls and the trolls using their hair to make a wig. So, isn't being excited a form of happiness and didn't Gristle realize he was already happy before, during, and after meeting Bridget? Why does he need to eat a troll when he already felt happy? Even all the Bergens celebrate Trollstice before eating a troll, meaning the entire setup with the Bergens is pretty pointless, because they did feel some happiness without even knowing it, and yet had to be reminded of it. And also, what is Chef's motivation exactly? She was once banished from Bergentown for having the trolls escape and she returns to serve the trolls again, but at what cost? Is she trying to take the throne and kill the king? Is she trying to take control of the trolls so that every Bergen has one? There's no clear answer to what she's doing, and these bits are only briefly hinted at or mentioned, and they go absolutely nowhere at these points. And it's made more noticeable with the rushed pace of the film. For only being 92 minutes, the film doesn't have a solid way of timing each moment. Occasionally it works, but between every other sad moment or joke, they just jump right into the next part of the scene without letting enough time for the moment to sink in. From Branch's grandmother and her death, to Branch burning Poppy's ukulele, there needed to be an extra second or more to make the moment work. Even if it almost does. But for the rest of the film, it all works very well. The animation for it is all colorful, bright, and very lively, even when matched with the renditions of popular songs. Which are all done pretty well. They're sung well, they're nicely catchy, they're upbeat, and they add a nice flow to the film. And that also includes the film's original song, Can't Stop the Feeling, which happens at the end of the movie, has a fun and catchy beat, and is nominated for Best Original Song at the Oscars. There's also some scenes done in felt cutout form like Poppy's Scrapbook, and they appear as cute and colorful as the film's main animation. Though much of the colorful animation is mostly with the trolls and their home, the trolls also have good designs and unique ways of using their hair, and the designs of the various creatures are good to look at too. Plus, despite Poppy's character being limited, her personality, look, and cuteness just seemed to come on to me, which had me get this Poppy doll from a Build-A-Bear store a few years ago, and I don't know why, but just her appearance and persona alone made me like her. But where most of the jokes hardly get a laugh from me, there is one scene that does. It's where Bridget and Gristle are dating and they're at a pizzeria. They inadvertently hold hands when grabbing a slice of pizza, and it looks like they're going to kiss, but Bridget quickly slaps Gristle's hand, greedily takes the slice, and eats it. And while that moment got a laugh out of me, the next bits of the trolls trying to help Bridget compliment Gristle is also funny. Like Bridget repeats what the trolls say and Poppy says to compliment him back, and Bridget says, I like your back. Just that one dating scene got plenty of laughs from me. Actually, there are a few jokes that I did laugh at. Including the ones where Branch thinks the Bergens are coming, leading him to ruin every event, like a birthday party, a wedding, and a funeral. And the actors voicing the characters did a fair enough job. Anna Kendrick voices Poppy. Justin Timberlake voices Branch. Zoe Deschanel voices Bridget. Christopher Mintz Plaz voices King Gristle. Christine Bransky voices Chef. Russell Brand voices Creek. Gwen Stefani voices DJ Suki. John Cleese voices King Gristle Sr. James Corden voices Biggie. Jeffrey Tambor vs. King Peppy, Ron Funchies vs. Cooper, Kunal Nayar vs. Guy Diamond, Walt Dern vs. Smidge, Fuzzbert, Cloud Guy, and Mr. Dinkles, Kiefer Sam Wallace vs. Harper, Reese Darby vs. Bibley, Gozel Green vs. Grandma Rosie Puff, and Anna Jowell vs. Satin, and Caroline Hedrett vs. Chanel. As a whole, this movie is alright. The characters, though little to them, are fine, the story is okay, the animation is colorful and lively, and the renditions of songs, plus an original one, are nice and decent. Directors Mike Mitchell and Walt Dorn have made an animated musical that has more good moments in it than bad ones, with a couple of funny moments, the renditions of popular songs, a bright and colorful palette, and very lively animation. Yet where I find the story to be okay and the characters to be fine, though like in a couple of them, they do feel underused and generic as there's barely little development with them and are worth watching for their designs and some likeness. And all the other positives I mentioned also make the film worth watching. But it's kind of one of those films that I'm not sure what to make because of the story and characters being generic. Not to mention its rushed pacing, a few plot points, and timings of jokes and sad moments. 
Still, the entire films are right for being a mixed bag, as I still like it for all the good moments I found, and still question it for all the troubling moments I found. So today, this movie we get a rating of two and a half mixed stars. So thank you for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, support me on Patreon, and until next time for a new video. Thank you.